I've grown potatoes for years. I grow them in grow bags and also in my raised beds, but I've been looking for a method to grow them a little bit more effectively and with a little bit less work for me. I saw a YouTube video from Hugh Richards where he demonstrates growing them in straw in the UK. I don't live in the UK, I live in the low desert of Arizona, so I wasn't sure if that same method would work for me here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how it went when I tried growing potatoes in straw, plus give you a few tips for growing potatoes no matter where you live. But if we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. Your timetable might be a bit different than mine. Here in the low desert, we have two shorter growing seasons, one in early January or February, and again, another planting season in September or October. Typically, in most climates with one longer growing season, you're gonna plant in the spring after danger of frost has passed and that soil temperature has warmed up to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Any colder than that and those potatoes could rot. The first part of my journey in growing potatoes in straw was getting the straw. So I loaded up my minivan with a bale of straw from a local farm supply store. Don't use hay as it can have lots of seeds and they can sprout as weeds in your garden. Avoid it if you can. I used Yukon Gold seed potatoes because they grow really well in my area. It's important to buy certified disease-free seed potatoes. In short season areas, such as where I live, plant early and mid-season determinate varieties of potatoes. If you have a longer growing season, choose indeterminate or late season varieties of potatoes. Indeterminate potatoes can grow a larger crop, but they're gonna take a little bit longer. So it's important to bring those seed potatoes out of dormancy before you plant them. If the potatoes are still dormant when you plant, oftentimes they will rot. So the first thing to do is to warm them up to about 75 degrees and keep them in the dark for just a couple of days. Then put the seed potatoes where the temperature is between 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and where they'll be exposed to light. This is called chitting. You want those potatoes to sprout. Once potatoes have sprouted, you can cut them into pieces if the potatoes are larger than an egg. Ensure each piece has two or three eyes. When it's time to plant, only plant the sprouted potatoes. The next step was to prepare the soil. Get that bed ready for planting. A recent soil test confirmed that my nutrient levels were good, but my pH was a little bit high. Potatoes prefer a pH of about five to six. So I pulled back the watering grid, added some garden sulfur, and raked and watered it in. Growing potatoes requires potassium, calcium, and phosphorus, but not too much nitrogen. Excess nitrogen leads to green growth above the ground and can delay the tuber growth below the ground. So you may need to amend your soil before you plant. Now it's time to plant the potatoes. I planted one potato per square. I nestled the potato in the soil, but I didn't bury it. Once all the squares were planted, I put a nice thick layer of straw over that entire bed. And then I put the watering grid back on top. Before long, sprouts started appearing through the straw. When the sprouts were six to 12 inches high, I pulled the grid off, put another thick layer of straw on top, and then put that watering grid right back on. So throughout this time, I was watering about once a week if we didn't get any rain. Soon enough, the potatoes began growing through that second layer. At this point, I just let them grow. They required very little care. Those potato plants were growing really well and then they started to die back. And that was a signal to me that something was going on below ground. When the sprouts began dying back, I went ahead and turned off the water. At this point, I couldn't wait to see what was going on underground. So I dug down in to kind of get a feel for what size the tubers were and how far along in that development process they were. If the skin rubs off easily, it won't store as long. So leave them in the ground for another two weeks after the plant has completely died back. The extra time in the ground allows the skin to dry out and toughen up. 
This makes the potatoes less prone to bruising and they'll store longer. Harvesting potatoes grown in the straw is simple and a lot of fun. The first thing I did was take off the plants and that first layer of straw. I used the straw in other areas of my garden and in my chicken coop. So I began sifting through the lower straw and the top layer of soil. Most of the potatoes were in the straw, on the soil surface, or just under the soil. Harvesting the potatoes was a lot of fun and it was amazing how many potatoes there were. I brushed the loose soil off the potatoes but didn't wash them. So because I'd cured them in the ground for a couple of weeks after the plants died back, I went ahead and brought them inside to continue curing. Light exposure turns the skins green and can burn the potatoes and will create soft areas that will rot. The best place to store potatoes is in a root cellar, someplace cool and dark. I don't have a root cellar. I brought the potatoes inside and right now they're stored in a black garbage sack to help trap the humidity in my coolest closet. I'll check on them regularly and use them over the next few weeks and hopefully months. Because we have two growing seasons that are relatively close together, I'm gonna try and save some of my potatoes for seed potatoes. So I kept the largest potatoes for us to use and then some of those smaller egg-sized potatoes, I'm gonna save those and try and plant next season. The trick will be to keep them cool enough to discourage sprouting over the summer. I'd love it if it works because finding seed potatoes in September here in the low desert is always a trick. All right, so did my experiment work? Absolutely, I am so happy with the amount of potatoes I harvested. This method proved very simple and productive. I'm definitely using this method to grow potatoes again. Thank you so much for watching.